Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Carl, a member of the CK12 team, and my colleague Felix and I will be running this learning management breakout session on CK12 and Google Classroom. We're so glad that you've joined us. Before we begin the core content for today's webinar, I'd like to make sure everyone's comfortable with the web, the Zoom webinar platform. You should see two different options on your screen one for Q&A and one for chat. During today's presentation, whenever you have a question about CK12, please post it in the Q&A window. The chat window is a place for community conversation. We'd love you all to introduce yourselves right now in the chat window. If you're an educator, feel free to share where you live and what subject you teach. Just make sure in the chat window that you're sending any general posts to all panelists and attendees and not just to CK12 or the panelists. Also, while we don't anticipate any technical issues during our broadcast, if you're having any trouble with your video or your sound, please let us know in the Q&A or chat window. We've created a handy resource page for this webinar session. You can find it at the tiny URL, tinyurl.com slash CK12 Google. It's listed here on the screen, and we'll also put the link for today's resource in the chat window right now. It's a page that you're going to use to follow along during this presentation, or it can be printed if you like for a later date and used as a reference page. Given that this is meant to be a short webinar to specifically highlight CK12's integration with Google Classroom, let's jump right into the content. As we go, feel free to post any questions you have for us in the Q&A window. Today's session is called Google Classroom Integration. For those of you using CK12 and Google Classroom, or using one and interested in incorporating the other, this is a great place to get started. Specifically, during this webinar, we'll be covering the following topics. CK12 modalities, a quick review of the different modalities available to assign from CK12, as well as how each one is reported back to Google Classroom. Then, Google Classroom integration, how to assign content and practice, and seeing students' progress in Google Classroom. CK12 organizes its concept, the content into concepts and supports each of these distinct skills with a variety of modalities. I just want to go over the types of modalities that you can assign to your students in a Google class. These include reads, videos, Plix interactives, simulation, practice, as well as customized practice that we call quizzes, and real world application. Note that our 2.0 Flexbook version of each concept combines the read and the practice in a single assignment. Now that you've seen the different types of modalities that you can assign in CK12 and Google Classroom, I want to take a minute to go over what you'll see in a report based on the type of modality. So um, if the modality type that you're assigning is our adaptive practice, your goal, the goal for the students is to get 10 correct, and then you are allowed to turn it in any time. CK12 will report a percentage out of 100, and in the LMS, it'll be the percent of the score chosen. For quids, it's very similar to that, um, except that out of 10, it's out of by the number of questions that are on the quiz. For the different modality types of read, video, or real world application, the goal is that they read or watch it, and then they turn it in after they open. This is simply a yes, they did it, or no, they didn't, score that's passed back. So either it's going to be a zero or a full score. Same thing with the Plix interactives. The goal is to get them to use the interactives when you make them, when you assign it. So what CK12 responds back or turns back into Google is yes, they've opened it or no, they haven't. And the same thing's true with simulations, that the goal is to get them to go explore the simulation and turn it in afterward. And, and literally, the turn it in is simply they opened it and turned it in. So that's a little kind of chart there for you to understand what you're going to be getting back from CK12. So remember that the only time that you're given any numbers 
other than just kind of they did it or they didn't, is if you assign the adaptive practice or the quiz. So um, <clears throat> now that you've seen the different types of modalities that you can assign in CK12 and Google Classroom, um, I want to turn this over to Felix, who will be exploring our Google Classroom integration. Thanks, Carl. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. So hopefully you can see my screen. Um, so right now I'm signed in as a teacher. Um, so this is our, our home page or landing page. And I'm just going to go through um, finding some content and assigning it to my Google Classroom. Um, so I'll go ahead and take us go ahead and jump into chemistry. Um, and if you're familiar with the site, this shouldn't be anything new but if you're not um, basically I'm going through our, our chemistry section um, so the way we have it laid out is we have our concepts which are what I'm going through here and then if I were to click over to this tab right here would be our flexbooks so I'll kind of show you a little bit about uh, but right now I'll start on the concepts and I'll go to let's try atomic structure and I'm gonna go into Adam um, and so as Carl was mentioning, we have um, several different modalities and um, ways that students and yourself can sort of digest uh, content. So again, read, video, practice, our real world example. Um, so first I'll start off with, uh, we'll do a read. So here's the content. Um, as you can see, this is just like reading a, an article that you'd find on, you know, anywhere on the web pretty much. Um, up here we have our practice badge. So this is a practice that is associated to the same concept. Um, so if I were to actually click on this, I could assign from here. Um, but first I'll go ahead and do this, assign a class. Um, and this will be common, uh, this assign a class placement will be common on these types of pages, um, as you'll see. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on assign the class. Since we're doing Google Classroom, I'm gonna click on Google Classroom. And right now it's gonna ask me to connect to Google. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And if this was your very first time, you would actually see a permissions, uh, sort of a permissions dialog pop up. And it would say, you know, we need permissions to connect to, to see your classes, to be able to create assignments and things like that. Um, so after agreeing and accepting those permissions, then you would be able to see this. Um, so these are the classes that I have in Google Classroom. And what I'm going to do now is just give this a due date. So let's make it Monday. And then I'm just going to assign that to the class. And so just to give you sort of a full view. So this is the, the class that I had just assigned to. Let's see if this refreshes it up. Oh, there it is, stream was just updated. So, uh, so here's that assignment there. And so now if I click on instructions, uh, here's the URL um, and then the students that it's assigned to. So just to show you that it actually did make it to Google Classroom. And as you saw, there was a little bit of a delay, but um, this was already going to update, but I had just refreshed a little preemptively. Um, so I'll go back over here. So that's that's assigning. Um, I'll do another. I'll do a practice this time. Um, so again, this assign a class um, on these sort of our modality pages. It's it's always the same. Um, so you'll always see this here, and you'll be able to click on this and do our same assign a class. And since I had already connected to Google, it's going to pull up the same classes. So uh, a couple things I will also point out. Um, this instructions you can type um, and it will show up in your Google Classroom at, uh, with the post. You can also change the title. Uh, so. And that'll also show up in your post. And then this right here, so since this is a practice, um, what we've sort of kind of brought in, um, so before, before we introduce this, the answers to the practice would show up automatically when students were to get them incorrect. 
Um, so there's a report screen that they kind of see after they do their attempt. Um, it'll show them what they got right, what they got wrong. So by default, uh, we now have the correct answers will be hidden. So the only thing they'll see is, is the, the answers that they submitted on the test. They won't see what the correct answer was if they got it wrong. If you leave this, um, if you leave this in the default, if you want to show the correct answers, then you have to click on that, make sure this is kind of highlighted, um, then the answers will show. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Give this the same date and assign the class. And then I'll go ahead and go over to um, this class again. And so as you can see, here's the title that we had changed, which is here. Um, also that instructions text that I had is also here. And then one other thing I will say is um, after you create the assignment, there's, there's a few things that you can't do directly on CK12 while creating these assignments, but you can modify the assignment here and, and kind of do more um, probably of things that you're used to. So one thing is uh, changing the points. By default, we do 100%, 100, 100 point, ugh. 100 base point system. Um, so you can change that here. Also, you can modify the due date if you like, and you can also um, add a topic. And then if you also, if you needed to attach anything, if you wanna add a video, um, if, you're, if you wanted to add a link to something else on the website, you could. Um, so that's always an option. Just want to add a link here. So if you wanted to even place a URL, um, you can do that and just save it uh, to give them a little more maybe context or just additional resources. So after you create the assignment, you can modify the assignment. Um, just to recap, change the points uh, if you want to change the title. Oh yeah, one, one uh, huge thing that uh, Google allows you to do. So the other thing we do by default is assign to everyone in your class. So if you wanted to just target uh, certain students, you can. Um, so you'll have to go into the assignment once it's created um, on Google Classroom and then just select which student or students you would like to have to, to be able to access this assignment. Um, and then just make sure you save. And so let me go back. Sorry, the toolbar in my way. Um, so I'm gonna go back, let's go back to the browse. I'll show you uh, assigning, let's see, maybe like a Plix. Um, just cause the, the layout's a little bit different. Um, so these are our Plix. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this first one here. So the assigned class is up on the top, and for the Plix and our simulations, uh, the assigned classes action is up here. Uh, but once you click on this, everything else is the same. And so I will do the same exercise here, just assign it. And you can, again, the same options of uh, changing the title are there. And I'm going to go back. Oops. Make sure to close this. Go back here. I'll also show you a simulation um, just so you can see what how it that works. And so again, the assigned class is here, and uh, same exercise. And then the other thing with our simulation and Plix assignments, um, if you have students who are using mobile devices, so if they're using like the Google Classroom app, I think on the mobile devices, or um, they're just using the, the browser from their phone, um, for our simulations and our Plix, um, they do require a bit bigger real estate. So if they're using something that's too small, um, Oh, there we go. They'll end up seeing something like this. Um, so if their device is big enough in landscape mode, it just may tell them to, to turn it 
to landscape mode. So that's just one thing to be aware of if you're um, assigning simulations and students are on their mobile devices. Um, they will want to use something a little bit bigger if it's a, a small phone. Um, usually tablets are okay, but if it's like a really small uh, cell phone, they might need to use like a regular laptop or desktop computer if they heck, if they can or um, just a big something with a bigger uh, screen size. Okay, and then let me go back to classroom here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click on this assignment. So this was the simulation. Actually, better yet, let me switch over to the student so you guys can kind of see what the students would see for these assignments. Um, so let me switch to my student. Okay, so this is a, I'm a student here. Okay, so here's that, that same simulation assignment. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this link here. And basically what this is doing, it's signing me into CK12, and then it's gonna open uh, the assignment. And so with the simulation, you see there's this, it's telling you that this is a sign, please interact with it to turn it in. Um, so from the table that Carl was mentioning, what we require them to do is to at least do some sort of interactivity. Um, so here I just clicked on, you know, play to get started. Um, and it has the turn in option. The button is now visible and um, ready for them to, to click. So I'm gonna skip that. And so now it says that I've completed it. So unlike the, uh, the plicks, which I'll show you in a second, where you have to go through um, at least attempt uh, uh, one of the challenge questions. This one, we just kind of, you just have to sort of interact with it, get started, and then you'll have the option to turn in. So let me go back to, so this was that same assignment. As you can see here, now I have a grade, um, and that's auto submitted from, from CK12. So let me show you another assignment. Uh, let's see, I think this, oh, here's a, here's a Plix. Um, so similar idea, but a little bit different. And this is just to kind of show you how a student would interact with it to turn it in. Uh, so here we still have the same banner that's showing. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go ahead and attempt the question. Next. And so it says you've completed it. So as long as they've attempted a challenge question, we don't, if they got it right or wrong, um, we're just looking for the interaction to say that they've they've attempted. Um, then we go ahead and submit back. And again here, now you can see this has been updated with the score. And then let's see, I will, okay, so here's a, a previous assignment that was there. Um, so this is similar, this is, think of it like one of our read. Um, any of our reads, our videos, our RWAs, which this is, um, they'll all kind of look similar. Um, for the videos, obviously you'll just have, a, this will just be the video with maybe the title. Um, for these, we auto submit. So once they, they get to this page and they open, we submit the score. So that's where you saw the 100% there. Um, coming i'm not sure when exactly but we are planning on adding an actual like turn in button here um so it won't just be that the, them opening it they'll have to open and click the turn in button um so that'll that's something that we we plan on adding um just to make it a little you know make students have to work a little bit harder um to get their to get credit for this um, but again, so for, for this one, this example is a, a real world example, uh, but for videos and for our reads, they all work the same um, in the sense that once they open and they get to this page, we're submitting, um, we're submitting 100% just saying that they, they did do something. Um, so that's that one. And then, so let me, let me stop here and quickly show our... Yeah, let me, let me show a few more things. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the, the teacher. Make sure I get the right window. 
Okay. And okay, so uh, let's let's talk about the flexbooks. Uh, actually, yeah, let's do flexbooks. So a lot of times, um, teachers um, or instructors, educators, whoever is creating these assignments, want to sign. Let's say you want to sign a, a flex book. Um, so what you what you'll notice is that there's no assign the class here. And that's because you can assign this entire book as it is. Um, if you want, if you just wanted to send this to Google Classroom and you're not so much interested on it being graded, um, I will point out uh, this feature down here, which is our share. So the difference between the share and assign, which is this guy here. Um, so the share, you and although you can create an assignment from here, it doesn't auto grade like it does when you're um, actually going through the assign the class action. Um, but if you just wanted to send this to, to Google Classroom, um, you can make an announcement, um, ask a question. You have these options, but if you just wanted to share like the entire thing to your Google Classroom, you can. And then also um, you can select which students would see this And so that'll get posted. Um, so that's an option if you're if you're looking to you still want to share something and you don't have the option to assign, but you just kind of want to get it in there. Um, you can you can use the share down here, which is available on most of our pages that have content. Um, so you'll find it throughout the site. Um, so that's always an option. Um, so let's dive in here also. So again, you can't assign this chapter. Um, so what we what we do allow you to assign is the actual section itself. Um, and again, this, this changed because of this little uh, widget that popped up over here. But the very first thing at the top is our assign to class. Um, so I'll go ahead and click on that. And I'll just show you what it looks like um, after you assign it, because it might look a little different than what you're expecting. And I'll do the same thing here. And then uh, we'll go to that. Let me also go to um, this library here. Um, so you may have started creating things or saving things to your library, um, which you'll, you'll have here. But let's say you wanted to assign a quiz. So let's go ahead and open that. Um, and you totally can do that here. Is the option to assign a class. And so, uh, in the same same manner uh, and again you also since this is a, a assessment uh, item you have the options to turn on or turn on showing the answers or leave them turned off so real quickly um, let's just go back to so this was that that flexbook section I just want to show you what it looks like so from what compared to what we saw versus what it's going to look like here so what we do is basically strip away all of the extra, the navigation, all the toolbars, and it's it's basically just like that real world example we saw earlier. Um, so that's just kind of a heads up. And the grading works exactly the same. Um, once they open it, they'll get full credit. Um, and then so real quickly, um, I will show you um, this Flexbooks 2.0, which kind of brings in a lot of uh, neat features together in the sense that you get a you'll have your read and your practice kind of all in one one area um, so this is this is our I guess our newer offering um, I'll quickly point out a few things so down here we have our related content um, so you don't have to go finding uh, things that are related we kind of just bring it all in together um, Resources, if there's anything that's attached. So there's answer keys here for teachers, uh, but if you were to customize or make your own, you could attach your own uh, resources. And then here's the practice that's been sort of associated with this. Um, so it's all kind of in one, one experience. Uh, you don't have to go back and forth. Um, but I will show you the signing from here. Um, 
So here we require a start and a due date. And I will make this due the 28th. Um, and then you have this, the same options are here. Um, as far as showing the answers by default, they're off. Um, you have instructions, which is the same as before. And then I'll just click assign. Cool. And then this is this will be the last thing, and then we'll we'll go to questions. Uh, so let me go back to the class. Actually, let me switch over to the student and then um, show you this. Show you that Flexbook 2.0 uh, experience for the student. Okay, so. Okay, here's the student. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open this. So the, the neat thing about this is that uh, you have your read and your practice are together. So for the students, they can come in, they can read. Before they can even turn in, they'll have to do the practice, uh, which is here. So they go through this, do some practice questions, and then they'll have the option to turn it in. Um, but again, they have their related content is right down here. Um, and they can go through this, and once they're ready, they can attempt the practice. And real quick, this is one that I think has the practice has been attempted. Okay, so the practice has been attempted. We're gonna submit it and turn it in. And coming, um, coming soon, you'll be able to associate your own quizzes to uh, these sections. So you won't have to use the practice that we have. You'll, able, you'll be able to do your own custom quizzes and um, assign them to excuse me, assign them to your, to your own uh, Flexbook 2.0 sections. And so with that, I'll go ahead and stop and then we can uh, open it up for questions. All right, well, Felix, thanks so much. A lot of great information about connecting CK12 to um, our Google Classroom partner. Um, we have a couple questions here. The first from Jim is, is there a way to assign to a class during your planning period, but not have it alert the class immediately that you've just assigned it? So like, can, can I, you, I see you can set a start date, but can you also set a start time? So right now, we, there isn't a way to set a start time. Um, I think what you could probably do is for the ones that don't at least have a start date. Um, I th let me see. I think you can go into to classroom itself and oops. Yeah, so I guess from our side, you, you can't do it directly from, from CK12, but you might be able to do that from, let me see if I'm on the right, from here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah. yeah, so from here you would have to go in and edit. Um, so like I was showing, you can edit the assignment after assigning it. Um, I don't know if you have, if there would be a student that you could assign to yeah, I guess they would, they'd probably see it for a quick second. Um, so yeah, it looks like it, there isn't really a, a clean way to do that, but after you do assign it, you can modify the time. Uh, All right, and there's another great question here, which says, after a practice modality, I know you can click on each individual student to see the report, but is there a way from Google Classroom to see all my students reports at once and get a heat map the way you can on the CK12 site. 
Yeah, so we're actually working on um, integrating. We So we are working on, we have a new report for um, our assignments that are directly on CK12 that we're working on integrating with um, Google Classroom. Um, so at the moment, there isn't a way to do that, but it is something where we're actually working on um, giving you this ability. And it will, if you if you haven't seen the new reports on CK12, um, go and check that out because you'll we basically you'll be getting everything that that's there. So we won't we won't be taking anything away. But um, as of right now, that's that's not available. But um, we definitely plan on having it before the next school year. But I think we maybe even by the summertime we'll have it for for Google Classroom uh, specifically. All right. Well, Felix, thanks so much. Um, lots of great information, like I was saying. Um, I would like to go ahead and reshare my screen and wrap up our webinar, and then we'll stay on for anybody that wants to make sure that they get their question answered. All right. I'm going to go ahead. All right, so um, we're going to wrap this up now, as I said, and I want to point out to you that we have integrations with so many different systems. Um, we have like uh, Canvas, uh, Google, uh, Blackboard, Schoology, Clever, so many out there. So go ahead to ck12.org slash tools and apps to find out more about our, our um, integrations and also about our apps that are available on the Apple app, uh, app Store and also at the Google Play Store. If you want to learn more about the modalities and resources discussed in today's webinar, you can see an overview of all of our resources at ck12.org slash overview. There you will find information as well as videos for our Flexbooks Adaptive Practice, Learning Management Systems, and so much more. You can also download a flyer if you think that somebody at your school might be interested in this, you can email them this link, but also there's a physical flyer that you can print out if that's easier to go throw it in their mailbox. We have um, one more webinar at the tail end of January on the 31st. It's a great introduction for any of you new to our Flexbooks. It will cover both finding great content and the basics of customizing books on our site. In early February on the 6th, we'll do a matching introduction to our practice system and how to create assignments for a variety of our learning modalities. You can register for any of the upcoming webinars and see our archives of webinars at ck12.org slash webinars. Just a quick reminder that there is a resource page available for the session today, and the link is tinyurl.com slash ck12google. And um, I think STARS just put it into the chat window. On that PDF, you can find the chart that I referenced at the beginning of the session, as well as general notes about our integration with Google Classroom. Each summer, we run an intensive professional development program for educators looking to become CK12 certified. To do that, they attend a series of five or more live hour-long webinars, and they watch two on-demand sessions and complete the matching assignments. If you're interested in becoming a certified educator during this school year, please note that today's short session doesn't count towards your live session requirements and thus doesn't have a matching assignment. If you want to learn more about the program, you can do so at ck12.org slash certify. If you decide to do the whole program, we can issue your certificate and documentation at the end. However, if you need a certificate documenting your participation in today's webinar specifically, please email jumpstart at ck12.org and we'll get that issue to you. Before we end today, I want to encourage you to answer a short questionnaire to give us feedback on the content and presentation of this webinar as we're always looking to improve our experience. The link on the Google form listed on the screen, tinyurl.com slash ck12 webinar 1819. And it's also being messaged in the chat window. We really appreciate you giving us this feedback because it helps us make constant improvements. We'll also send you this link in a follow-up email as well. Well, on behalf of all of us here, uh, we'd really like to thank you for joining us today. 
As we've said, we're happy to help you in any way. Just send us an email or post a question on our G uh, CK12 Jumpstart forum. And don't forget to let your social networks know about CK12 and your participation in our webinars. We're on all the socials as CK12 Foundation, or you can do hashtag CK12. Okay, so that's it for today's core programming, but as promised, um, we'll stay on and we'll answer all the remaining questions as long as you have any. So let's go take a look now and see what there is. And we have no open questions. So that's um, kind of easy. So if you have any further questions, or if you think of some tonight, go ahead and uh, just email us and we will be glad to answer them. Once again, that's jumpstart at ck12.org. So from sunny Palo Alto, we wish you all a pleasant day and we hope to see you again on our next webinar at the end of the month. Thanks so much and have a great day.